Okay, so uh, we are going to now introduce a new endpoint called users. Okay, and we need the users endpoint so that we can authenticate against these endpoints. So, for example, modifying an existing product, creating a new product, or deleting an existing product are kind of really crucial operations, and we only want authenticated users to be able to do them, right? Maybe get products is okay. We want people to be able to see the products, but adding, deleting, or updating existing products is something that should be left only to authenticated users who have a valid token, a JWT token, right? And we will do that, but for that, we need a user's endpoints, and that's what we'll introduce today in this session. To go ahead and make the changes, so I'm gonna just quickly run through them, and I think it's nothing new right now. But before I do that, I just have one tiny little thing to mention here, and that is uh, about the correlation ID, right? So we added this correlation ID middleware, and we have it added uh, to uh, our echo as the pre method, right? So it's been added here, and it's visible in the headers when we make the request, right? But we we were not logging it. And that's something I missed. So actually, if you want to add the logging for the correlation ID, I, an ID that is actually custom made, you know, it's it's not the one that is supplied by default using the echo framework. So how do you do that? Well, for that, uh, actually, if you go to the logger config file, it has a set of uh, fields that it uses by default. All right. So all these fields are by default being used. And uh, request uh, ID is uh, ID is one of them, which gives the request ID. And request ID in this case is the default uh, request header that Echo Framework uses as correlation ID, sort of. Okay, but we are not using that. We are using a custom header. So how do we make sure that we use our custom value that is displayed, that is injected into header to be displayed into the logger? So uh, the way I found out was that uh, there's a switch case statement here and there's some predefined values that you can use in your logger and uh, for example ID in this case if you use the ID then it actually uh, retrieves it from the header uh, using this value which is X requested ID okay but because we are using our custom header a custom header value and it's not a value that is predefined in the echo framework. Let's scroll down to the part where the case has a default case, right? And in this case, you can read values to be published into headers. And for that, you can actually use header, query, form, or cookie prefixed into your format here. And then uh, uh, with the particular given value. And then you can use that in a log. All right, so that's that's nice uh, little info, tiny bit of information here for you. Now, having said that, I'll just quickly start with a user endpoint. Okay, so it's very easy peasy. Okay, so what I've gone and done is first of all, let me come back to config.go. So I have added a users collection here. Okay, and it's going to be users and it's by default but uh, i can use this as the environment variable okay i also changed the name of the collection which used to be collection here i changed it to product collection and made the changes to main.go and elsewhere accordingly because now we have two collections to deal with right so these are just the kind of normal refactoring that you would usually do and you should anticipate basically ahead of time but that's fine now so i have gone ahead and created a user collection as well okay i have gone ahead and created a user collection using dv collection and this time it is using the user collection value the name of the user collection okay uh, and uh, there is i also created an index for our user collection so this part is something that we haven't done before, but in a Mongo database, you can create collections, uh, you can create indexes at the collection level. So indexes help you actually speed up your operations, sort of, you know, otherwise uh, sometimes you have to, uh, th there are things that the MongoDB 
uh, will do if you have an index in terms of querying your database, your collection. And having index makes it very easy. So the underscore ID is kind of like the default index if you don't create one and it's supposed to be unique and everything. Uh, but you can also create an index on your custom field. So I've gone ahead and I've actually created an index. And so index for that, I first of all have to create an index model. Okay, so the way to create index first of all is you use the user collection, which I did here. Uh, there's an indexes method and then there's an index one method inside it that you call. It accepts a context object and it uh, accepts index model as uh, the second argument. Okay, and that index model actually accepts uh, keys and options. Okay, in the keys you mention the field that you want to use as an index. So in this case, username will also be an index aside from ID. Okay, so that is fine. And then you have an options where you make sure that this particular index for this particular user field is going to be unique. Okay, so unique here is a boolean value. So for that, I actually I have a unique uh, I have a boolean value here, and I have to use a pointer of that, and that's why I have to do this. Okay. And then I create the index model and uh, I check for the errors. Another important thing to note is if you want to create an index, you want to do it ahead of time. As in ahead of time, as in you, you want to do it in the initialization phase. You don't want to create an index when you are querying the database. You want to create an index when your database is being set up. So otherwise, if you do that when you're querying or writing to database it's gonna be an expensive operation in terms of time and performance okay so it's something for you to note okay and uh, I've added the user endpoint slash uh, which is a which, which is going to be a post endpoint and I also have a user's handler okay so my users handler for that I've created another handler file called users go users dot go and I'll I'll be getting to that in just a minute. So that file uh, has a handler which I'm initializing here. Okay, and I'm passing its collection the value of users uh, users collection. Okay, this is very similar to product collection and product handler. So I'm not going to actually go into much detail there. So I think this all should be very familiar to right now. Okay, so let me delete this config file. We already gone through it. Uh, the products.go this time it didn't have any changes. Okay, so because we didn't have to make any changes there. Uh, no changes in the interface as well because we'll be using the same collection API which has got the same methods. Okay, coming back to the main file here that is user.go file. So the simple stuff. Okay, so my user is going to be an email and password. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, its BSON value, it's going to be username and password, but its field is going to be email. Okay, uh, in terms of validate, I, I require both of these fields. I require the email to be of type email, so it's going to check for that at the rate something.com. All right, so it's going to uh, throw an error if it's not present there. Okay, so uh, the password is going to be. Uh, the minimum eight characters maximum 300 why 300 is uh, because uh, we will be actually getting the password from the user and will be converting into hash okay and that hash could be of some finite length but usually it just it, it's 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 big in size okay not too big but somewhere around you know it could be easily 60 80 characters right so I'm just to be safe I have it as 300 characters Users handler is a struct, okay, that we were using in our main.go, and it has uh, dbifs collection API as, uh, as a field, okay. We only have one uh, handler here that is create user. The it's it's a route handler, so context is the argument, error is the response, okay. Just the usual stuff. So I have got uh, a validator here as well for uh, user validator. So user validator that accepts 
that has well data as the field and uh, it also has uh, implements this validated method which is the same signature as the one in echo all right and it returns the validation result using this struct method against the interface uh, against the argument that is supplied here okay usual stuff so i declare a user variable i initialize the validator for uh, the context echo to user validator here and the validator is going to be v this v is actually in the products.go file here okay uh, as a matter of fact i think i should uh, put it outside in a different file but for now because it's the same package okay I can use it here all right so so that is why this is already initialized in products.go I'm binding the users I'm requesting I'm reading the request board in making sure that uh, it is parsable okay and then I'm validating the user so it's gonna validate against all these validate conditions and then at this point I actually invoke insert user method which is our private method and it is here insert user method actually returns an empty interface which is going to be the ID of the user that got created and then the HTTP error so first of all I want to find uh, if the user exists or not okay so uh, I got a user here okay uh, the user has already been uh, inflated with whatever was supplied in the request body and I'm passing it as an argument to insert user function okay so I can uh, I can find the current database to check if there's any user by the user email that has been entered by the user I need to do that because I don't want to I first of all want to check if I need to create a user or if there is already a user that exists okay so I need to make that check right so uh, I'm going to get the response which I'm going to decode to new user here okay so I'm going to decode it into new user and then there's uh, I'm going to check if the error is nil another thing that I'm going to check if if the error is not equal to mongo error no documents okay so I have two conditions here so basically if the user doesn't exist by that email ID in the collection this particular operation will actually return you an error and that error is going to be of a particular value that is error no documents so it means that it returned you no documents okay so you want to check if the error is nil is not nil and also it is not of this type okay and then we can assume that there's some kind of decoding errors and we want to return an error here otherwise uh, if uh, at this point new new user has been actually decoded into uh, the one that we found from the response right and we want to see if the email field here is empty or not if it is not empty that means that we found the user by the same email ID in the collection and that is why we, we can't create that user so at this point we also return saying 400 that the user already exists okay so it was a bad request to create the user okay uh, and then we actually insert the user at this point we, sh we know that the user does not exist so we insert the user we get the inserted ID and we return it back okay we check for errors in between okay so that is the use case right now now we need to expand this first of all we are going to be needing to get the password as well convert it to convert it into some hash and then store it into the user into the database okay because we, we can't just uh, store the password in the same plain string that has been sent to us by the user that's bad practice okay uh, so also when the user email is not equal to empty so it means when the user exists okay we want to do something here we want to create a jot token token and we want to set it in the header 
in the response here okay now that is something that we will figure out how to do but for now I just wanted to introduce this user endpoint right now okay so let me run this go method here right now okay and let me come back here to insomnia all right so let me just first of all let me just tell something like uh, gmail.com here all right and let me come back and show you the collection as well so as soon as I started the server I have the users database uh, users collection even though I haven't actually added anything to it I don't have products database well that is because uh, in my main.go file I am creating an index right and creating an index at this point is being done as part of this initialization process and that's why in doing so it created the collection although it doesn't have any documents right now okay so let me do some checks here so I send a bad JSON it complains that it can't parse the request payload I send the JSON that is valid but with an invalid data so it's gonna complain that it can't parse the request payload it cannot validate it and let me this time say uh, send the correct data okay so I send it and it creates a user back in the database creates a user with the same password we need to hash it we'll do it later okay if I send the same request back I get user already exist and that's what I expect right uh, the headers are the response headers have the X correlation ID which is fine okay but we also need to set it to we also need to set the JWT token and we need to send it as the header okay uh, to the user so user can then use that token to make the request to products endpoint okay so we are going to see that in the next session so for now my intention was to show you so this is how it is back to VS code I also wanted to show you the HTTP request code example here so this is the example right so here the request uh, ID is being logged right so this is a correlation ID that is being logged here because we added it to main.go all the way the down here right so it's being logged all right so that was it and I'll see you in the next session bye